What's up guys, this your boy, Barca boy 103 today we're going to be reacting to the Barcelona news over the past 48 hours where there is a lot of juicy topics that we have to discuss. Firstly, again, Barcelona's main transfer target in this January transfer window is to sign a midfielder and Alex Garcia is at the top of the list. We're hearing now that his release clause is actually cheaper than expected. Of course, it is expected his release clause is 20 million euros, but apparently his release clause is even cheaper than that as Barcelona continued to pursue his signing in January. We're also going to talk about how Deco is looking for a new winger this summer. He wants to, of course, provide that different dynamic out wide with only the Manny Amal and Rafinha being our natural wingers in the squad. And apparently in the summer, the club are planning on having a big sale. The main candidates for that big sale is either Robert Lewandowski or Arujo as the club want to fund other transfers. And one of those other transfers is signing the Juels on a permanent basis. We know the Cancel is pretty much guaranteed at this point, but apparently Barcelona is still very keen on keeping Joao Felix at the club in the long term. But before we get into it, make sure you guys smash that like button down below. Let's try to get the 200 likes this video. Be very much appreciated. Also, if you're new, make sure to subscribe down below if you haven't already. And let's get into it. Now, before we get into this video, this video is sponsored by Number One Foot. Number One Foot is one of the best replica football jersey websites on the market right now. They have a variety of different items at absolutely fantastic prices. For me here today, I'm going to show you guys the training kit from this season. This is the warm-up kit that, that the players use when they go out for training every single day, pre-games as well. You have here the Spotify logo. They have the club badge on it with the diamond as well. And I also have here one of the sweaters they have from last season. This was the Catalonia version. It feels like I bought this from the Nike store directly. The quality is absolutely unreal. The printing is fantastic. And of course, mainly the prices are unbeatable. And if you use the discount code BOY at checkout, you do get an additional 15% off your final order that is b-o-y use it at checkout you get 15 percent off your order and all orders above 80 dollars as well will guarantee you free shipping so what are you waiting for click the top link in the description down below and get your new football kits today Let's start off with the transfer news over the past 48 hours. Now, first we're going to be discussing how Barcelona is planning on signing a midfielder at some point this month in the January transfer window. With now Victor Roque officially registered, the club are now waiting for La Liga to let them know about how much FFP they have left. Once they know that figure, they will then enter the market for a midfielder. Again, the main name that we're hearing right now is still Alex Garcia, Ferran Martinez, one of Portivos, come out saying that Gerona said that Alex Garcia's release clause is around 20 million euros, and Barcelona sources claim that they have asked the figure and the clause is only around 12 million euros. It must be remembered that the first time they asked about Romeo's release clause, it was 10, then they went to 5, and then eventually Barcelona played 3.4. That is actually correct. But Barcelona have more names other than Alex Garcia, despite the fact they like him, and they're waiting for La Liga's reply and how much FFP margin they have. Right now, nothing can be done, but depending on the money the club can make in January, an operation would be undertaken. If Alex Garcia's release clause is 12 million euros, I might as well pay myself it is that cheap. There is no way we can be missing out on Alex Garcia, the captain and one of the best midfielders in La Liga of Gerona. There is no way for 12 million, you're just going to let that pass by. That is unfathomable to me. If it's 20 million, like, okay, you know what? That's a decent fee. 12 million? I think that's what we were going to pay for Marcos Alonso two summers ago. Now, staying on Alex Garcia, Sport have come out saying that Barcelona is not giving up on Alex Garcia and inside the club, they are not ruling out the process at all. A uh, relationship between the two clubs are flexible. Pablo Torre could enter the deal and we could even see Macalfe join there on a loan as well. We'll talk about that later on in regards to Macalfe, but what we're hearing mainly from not guaranteed sources, but from the actual sources themselves, this transfer is going to be very unlikely. Michel, the Gerona manager, came out saying that I have a feeling that Alex Garcia will not leave. It would hurt me if he left, not because he would go to Barcelona, but because we would lose a key player. But I think that he will continue. And there's also the sources in Gerona also stating that as of today, both Michel and the club have a feeling that Alex Garcia will continue at Girona. Of course, they're going to feel that way. I mean... We hear this all the time. It's just not down to Barcelona pursuing it. Once you hear the reports that, oh, Barcelona's in negotiations with Corona or they're talking to the player's uh, side on get to get to try and agree personal terms, that's when everything will start to 
unravel and you know undertake fully this transfer for me would revolutionize the midfield of barcelona we saw last night against las palmas how we struggled to create especially in the final third we saw frankie de young having to you know create and play the pivot and you know do everything pretty much in that midfield because good new one roberto were just so far ahead and they were so nullified in the game as well especially in that first half alex garcia would just absolutely change everything for barcelona and also add the other dynamic you gotta have good coverage for pedri as well when pedri gets his usual three injuries a season so it would be unbelievable signing for 12 million as well not even uh, that expensive at this point you know we missed out on Echeverri, he would have been cost 15 million plus uh, variables and the 15 million we're going to be paid in um in uh installments so if we were in talks for that deal surely we can afford 12 million for Alex Garcia but we shall wait and see we have been linked with a few other midfielders as well first up is Ederson of Atlanta who is a pivot uh, sport of Kamal saying that Deco can be left without Ederson from England they assured that Manchester United would be willing to present the first transfer offer for Ederson dos Santos as an Atlanta player so again we're hearing now United making that push for Ederson where Deco is still showing that interest in signing the Brazilian midfielder from Syria so keep your eyes on him later on down the line and finally a midfield signing that could be you know on the verge of completion very soon is for Lucas Barreval the reports coming in from Sweden suggesting that Lucas Barreval would be delighted to join Barcelona but the problem right now is the usual one which is his price which is apparently set at around over 15 million euros and any chances are therefore very slim for this deal to happen now so we heard initially Barcelona offered uh 4 million euros and negotiations were already agreed pretty much uh and negotiations were already in the advanced stages with him on personal terms but apparently now his club is asking for around 15 million euros and that's why the, the deal has kind of gone quiet over recent weeks so we'll wait and see on that again i think this is a play that you pay five to seven million for you wouldn't go into the double digits for someone like this because it's a massive massive risk uh this is why the club don't really assign youngsters and not a point like man city where your first team is pinpoint perfection you can go and get these young talents and take those risks the first team still needs good investment from barcelona so spending you know double digits on these you know young talents it is a massive, massive risk. So, you know, Bacchaval is 15 and Alex Garcia is 12 million. I'll tell you right now who I'm getting. And it's not going to be the Swedish man. So, that's the reality of the situation. So, wait and see in regards to this midfield signing. I am very, very confident that Barcelona will sign a midfielder in January. The question now is, who will it be? Now, a position in which Deco is keeping a very close eye on in terms of the market is in the winger position now Joaquin Pereira from Sport who of course the number one source in regards to Brazilian players moving around Barcelona he's come out saying that Barcelona wants to sign a comprehensive winger next summer a winger capable of providing the same performance on both the wings and has the ability to create superiority and break defensive lines they're pretty much not like a Neymar profile but a Neymar profile very fast winger who's got the ability to take on defenders cut inside create chances of that nature we have been linked with quite a few first one up is Savio Joaquin Pereira has come out saying despite the plans for the city group Savinho is still on Barcelona's radar apparently Man City want to bring in Savio to Man City even though Man City own Girona and you know it could get complicated but nonetheless City are interested in bringing in Savio to the Premier League and if they're interested of course that's case closed because they kind of technically already have the player nonetheless keep your eyes on him to get a goal against Atletico Madrid the other day but it was a tap and he had one of the worst gritties I've ever seen in my life now really strong uh, you know winger talents coming up that Barcelona could be in for is Messino of course his agent Andre Curry is in Barcelona as of uploading this video for the Victor Roque presentation but also of course to negotiate and maybe talk about a potential Messinio deal. Now, there are reports suggesting that in addition to the economic obstacle blocking the signing of Messinio, there is another one in Lamen Yamal. The clubs now believe that two great towns on the team in the same position could play together and also one of them could hinder the development of the other. Now, in regards to his price, I understand it. 60 million euros for a talent like him is a lot of uh, money. You're talking, you know, Rodrigo, Hendrik, Neymar level of investment. But this same position thing doesn't really wrap around my head correctly. Because, yes, you do need squad depth, which is very important. But secondly, 
you can see one of them moving to the left hand side. Whether it's Lemenya Mal or Messinho, I'm pretty sure they can both play on the same side. We've seen Lemenya Mal play on the left hand side this year. I understand they're both on the right wing. They're both naturally uh, right wingers. We can definitely, you know, convert one of them into a left one. But if you want to really stick with Lemenya Mal, I understand that. And I understand the price for 60 million for Messinho is quite a bit. But if he goes somewhere else and he explodes, then. We're gonna look like idiots, especially if Lamania Mal does not, you know, reach the heights that we expect him to reach, which I think he will do in the end. If we see Messina go to a PSG or a Man City and a United, a Chelsea, they're gonna be seeing him ball out, saying that could have been us. And then watch, imagine if he gets converted to a left winger by one of those teams. We're gonna be thinking we're bloody idiots. So I would really study into that first, see if one of them, with Lamania Mal or Messina, can do a job on the left. If they, if one of them cannot, then I understand why. The club one about Lemanya Mall makes sense, but again, in regards to the club right now, they're not really giving any indications on going for Messinho. Even chatting his press conference the other day was asked about Messinho, saying I've seen very little of him to be honest, or of course focusing on the team and blah 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 blah. So in regards to Messinho, I think the not the hype, but the momentum has kind of slowed down a little bit. But we'll wait and see what happens with these talks with Andre Curry in Barcelona. Was going to be taking place today, and the media will probably talk about it later on today, going into tomorrow. So we'll wait and see. But the final winger that we have been linked with is. Leroy Sané with sports suggesting that Leroy Sané does not accept uh, Bayern Munich's latest contract renewal offer and his contract expires in 2025 and from Germany they say that Barcelona and Real Madrid are monitoring the player situation. Now although Sané has done well for Bayern Munich this season this for me would be someone that I'd be interested in if they're on a free deal. So maybe next summer 2025 when he's on a free I'd be keen on him but right now spending money on him. It's not really my forte, especially with us needing a pivot. We'll wait and see what we do in the fullback area. I think wingers as well. Yeah, we're looking maybe someone with a bit of a younger profile than Leroy Sané, even though he's still probably young. I actually wonder how old he is, because if he's older than 25, I would definitely stay clear. He's 27. He's actually going to be 28 next week. So yeah, I would. this would be someone that I would probably go for on a free, uh, especially with him you know, coming to the prime ends of his career you could say again he has been doing very well this season but last season he wasn't that great since he's left city he's really you know been hit or miss in germany but i think on a free you take the risk but when it comes to a feed this summer with uh Bayern Munich, they probably want to ask for 40 million 50 million somewhere in that area the same price that city uh sold them to them so we will wait and see what happens on it. I think in the end, he'll probably stay at Bayern uh, Munich, but for now, he has rejected their latest contract renewal offer. So, wait and see what happens in regards to the winger position. Again, Deco is keeping an eye on the market, looking for a comprehensive winger. Again, with Fran Torres not really being a natural winger, and neither is Joel Fidix. We don't know about the future of Ansu Fati. In terms of the actual squad right now, you probably only have Lamin Yamal and Rafinha as the natural wingers in the squad. And of course, Deco will look to strengthen that and provide them some competition as well. Now, speaking about Joel Felix, there have been some reports re emerging about the possibility, of course, of signing both the Joao's on a permanent transfer, with Alex Pentel from Relivo coming out saying that Barcelona wants Cancelo and Felix to continue despite some doubts about the latter. The latter being Joao Felix, Man City, and Atletico Madrid are awaiting for calls from Barcelona. Now, again, the key aspect there is continue. I think in regards to Cancelo, we're going to try and sign him permanently no matter what. I think he's fully deserved it. The fullback market nowadays is so, so, you know, high in demand and whatnot with not that much being available on the market. You got to take what you can get and you have one of the best in the world who can play both left back and right back at an absolutely exceptional level. With Felix though, I think what the club will do, try to keep him on loan for another year, especially if he, you know, starts to slow down in the second half of the season. Of course, he was benched uh, against uh, Las Palmas yesterday. We'll see how he does this weekend in the, in the uh, Copa del Rey. We'll see, see how he does in the Super Cup in this month as well. But there's definitely a remontada there for Joao Felix to, you know, capitalize on. Again, when the pressure gets on him, he tends to perform. But then he starts to slow down. It's kind of, you know, a balance the up and down type of player. But I think the club will definitely not entertain signing him permanently through the summer. I think what they'll try and do is secure another loan. I think that's the plan right now. Of course, anything can change from now until May. I think with Cancelo, guaranteed 100%, but with Felix, it's going to be up and down. He'll get a hat trick. Oh, we're going to sign him permanently next week. He'll be dropped. Probably won't going to sign him. It's going to be all that movement. We'll have to wait and see what the final decision is at the end of the season. But for now, Barcelona are keeping their eyes on the Joels and are planning to sign both of them at some point this summer.
Let's start discussing the players that have been rumored to leave Barcelona over the past 48 hours. Now, we do have this report coming in from, again, Alex Pentel from Oliva, who just talked about the Joao staying on a permanent basis. He also came out with some summer market updates, first saying that Marcus Alonso will leave the club and not offer him renewal in any capacity whatsoever. Also mentioned that Lewandowski could be sold because of his age and, of course, his increase in salary. We just see him get subbed off during the middle of a game yesterday against Las Palmas. So, the road for Lewandowski right now isn't too great. Talks about Chavis' future being uncertain. Depends on how he ends the season off, which of course is absolutely spot on. And finally, on Arujo, he said that Arujo could be a transfer topic this summer because of the high interest for him. I'll tell you what, man, since these Bayern rumors, Arujo has just not been at the races. I don't know if it's his personal life, I don't know if it was the mask, I don't know what's going on. But since these Bayern minutes intensified with plenty goals saying that all oh, they had, a he talked to Tuco and stuff like that, Arujo just hasn't been at the races whatsoever. Now, The Athletic have come out saying that Bayern have no choice but to strengthen their defense during this month of January. The well-documented preference is, of course, Arujo, who can play both center back and right back, but a big transfer fee, and Borussia were luckless to sell him, my first German club, to look elsewhere. So Bayern Munich are 100% going to sign a defender this summer. Keep your eyes on who they sign. If they sign a big profile, 50, 40 million euros plus, they probably won't go for Arujo in the summer, but if they get just some random defender, youngster for like 3 million or some experience on a free agent or on a loan, that means they're planning someone big in the summer. Again, we're hearing that Barcelona, if they offer something, Bayern over 90, 100 million, the club will consider it. I think it depends a lot well, a good indication on Arujo's future will be the renewal talks from now until the summer. If we intensify renewal talks, if we begin renewal talks with him, that means the club do want to keep him. I think the club do want him to stay. I think Arujo is happy. But with now his dip in performances after these rumors have come out, the question is there. Again, defensive-wise, there's no doubt he's one of the best defenders in the world. On the ball, though, and his passing has been all over the place. I mean, first freaking second against Las Palmas yesterday, hoofs the ball out for a throw-in for Las Palmas. It's... I don't know if that's tactical, I don't know if that's, if that's himself, but I think, again, his passing is just not at the level that you expect for Barcelona, but again, his defensive ability just makes up for it, he's a world-class defender. So, we'll wait and see what happens with these summer exits, I think there is definitely something that could be said in regards to a big summer exit, whether it's Lewandowski to save on his wages, get 20 million for him, a big transfer fee with Arujo, maybe even Christensen or Kunde, because we're hearing about Chad Riyad maybe coming back and the defender currently being sold, so I feel like Barcelona do have maybe a big summer sale up their sleeves, but for now, everything is subject to the results at the end of the season. Now, you transfer rumor that doesn't really involve Barcelona directly but kind of affects us a little bit indirectly and that is the transfer of Mika Marmol who of course we played last night against Las Palmas going to Atletico Madrid. Now Mundo Deportivo are reporting that Atletico Madrid are interested in the former Barcelona defender Mika Marmol who plays right now for Las Palmas but the deal right now is a bit complicated but Barcelona still owes 50% of the players transfer fees. So if Las Palmas sell Mika Marmol to Atletico Madrid, Barcelona do get 50% of whatever transfer fee. So they sell them for 20 million, we get 10, they sell them for 5, we get 2.5, you know, so on and so forth. Now, Sport have also come out saying that Barcelona is closely monitoring former Barcelona athletic player Mika Marmor's future, but if from a secure 50% share in a potential sale, Las Palmas is seeking approximately 30 million euros for the young center back, and of course, Marmol played once under Xavi. I think he played in the Purple Kid. What was that game? I think it was Mallorca at that time when we had COVID and sickness and all and injuries and all that stuff. I think he played in that game. Nonetheless, though, if they want 30 million for him, Las Palmas, that means Barcelona get 15 million euros from that transfer, which also pretty much covers the entire transfer fee of Alex Garcia. If you think about it, if he is around 12 million euros, bloody hell, this this sale alone could you know benefit us a lot. I think with um, Atletico Madrid, their center back department, the Hermoso is going to be on a free this summer. I don't think they're going to renew him or not. I think Axel Vixel is coming to the end. Savage is, you know, falling out of favor. Uh, so Yonchu hasn't done too well. The only really decent center back has been Jimenez. Although Hermoso has done one for them this season, he still hasn't renewed his deal yet. So they are in the market for another center back. So keep your eyes on Mika Marmo making that move or Mika Marmo making a move in general. Because if he moves in general, are owed 50% of any transfer fee that Las Palmas sell Marmo for. Now, on the topic of Barca Athletic center backs, we do have a current Barca Athletic center back who's attracting a lot of interest around Europe, and that is Mikel Faye. There are reports suggesting that several Spanish and European clubs want to sign Mikel Faye. The play will either advance to the first team or go out on loan next season to a first team. So with this amount of interest in Mikel Faye this summer, the club will make a decision. They can either, one, sell him, of course, two, I think the most likely option at the moment, send him out on loan, 
or three, promote him to the first team. So 100% next season, uh, Mikael Fey will not be part of Barca Athletic. I think this is the correct decision for Barcelona, bringing in a young talent, let him grow in our system, in our B team. And then next season, you make that big decision. We've seen a lot with center backs recently, same profile. We did this, of course, with Mikael Marmol. We did this with Chad Riyad as well. So he's going to be falling under that same profile. Again, we're hearing that Gerona are super, super interested in him. He could maybe be involved in the Alex Garcia deal. If we get that done now, we might send Mikael Fey on loan there for maybe a year and a half, maybe six months, whatever the case may be. But I think a sale is very unlikely at the moment. The club really see him as the top talented center back and someone for the future of Barcelona's defense as well. They might sell him with the buyback option as well, like they did with Chad Riyad with the status Pedrola last summer as well. He could be falling under that same formula. Nonetheless, though, lots and lots of interest from a Calfe and Barcelona will have to make a decision at some point this summer. Let's now discuss some contract renewal updates around the first team at Barcelona. Just one update, and it is on the renewal of the first team captain, Sergi Roberto. Now, Alex Pantel from Relivo has come out saying that Sergi Roberto's future is not clear at all. The club have not yet made a decision. Roberto wants to stay, but he is aware that the current situation is not the same as it was before. I will say this, though. In our last three games, we played Royal Antwerp, Almeria, and um, Las Palmas. You could argue he was man of the match in all three. I mean, this man is playing out of his dear life trying to force this renewal now. And this, for me, is prime time Roberto. Like, if he wants a renewal, he's either going to get it now or never. I think if the club really buckled down and fold, they might give him a renewal now. I'm not quite too sure. I think it would depend a lot on what Xavi's stance is next season, if Xavi is the manager. I, I think that the club are very smart. What they'll do is wait till the end of the season, see if Xavi stays, and then ask Xavi, do you want to renew Roberto? you think it's actually worth it or not? you want to move on from the old guard and really start fresh with this young core now that's coming into their mid-20s? It's going to be all those questions. I'm really, I'll be super, super, super shocked if the club renew him mid-season like they did last year, because I knew last year that come February we're pretty much gonna win the league and that Chavez is gonna stay so Chavez said he wanted to keep him which is respectable but gotta give credit where it's due man Roberto is playing well over this past uh, few games for Barcelona so and you know what I, again I'm thinking by the fact that I don't think he should be renewed I think we should you know move on I understand why Chavez might want to keep him again he's already on peanuts apparently he's gonna earn he, he'll even take less peanuts to stay doesn't really want to send off at the moment we would probably prefer the send off at the uh 70% capacity camp now understand that as well but i think it's time that we really move on from the old guard especially with you know busquets alba and messi and pk already leaving he's kind of the last one uh, i think you know what's the point of holding him on to, for so long but he's playing well I i'm shocked that he played well yesterday even i was quite uh not skeptical but i had my concerns you know lost promise away decent stadium uh decent team really put on his own so you know shout out to him so we'll wait and see what happens i don't think the club will make a decision in the imminent future like in the next month but come you know april time roberto's still on this form and chavi's you know gonna be the manager i would say there's a decent chance that he's gonna be offered a renewal let's start to discuss some injury updates around the first team at barcelona first an injury update on Pedri, who again will probably miss the Super Cup, like we talked about in the last video, but there is some reports coming out about how Barcelona is going to take super duper extra careful of him for about the 17th million time. Now, Mundo Portivo have come out saying that Barcelona and Pedri have taken more steps to reduce the possibility of having muscular injuries in the future. He himself relieved, uh, revealed that he had made changes to his diet. He now does Pilates to improve his elastic and also goes into a hibernetic chamber to get better oxidation of all his uh, muscle tissues. The clubs, the dietitians, along with the medical services, have taken away gluten containing foods from his diet. The vitamin supplements he was uh, prescribed have also been changed. Barcelona made it easier for him to work with a renewed uh, physiotherapist, Raul Martinez, who is a trusted man in many special internationals and he treated players like Xavi, Iniesta, Puyol, Busi, and, and also David Villa, among others. In short, Pedri and Barcelona are doing everything they can to end his injury problems once and for all and for him to be a key player for Xavi. I've heard this report about four times now. I'm gonna be completely honest. Look, unless I see change, I'm not gonna believe it. Um, I will say this though. If Pedri gets injured a month after he recovers from this injury, not only will Pedri be under severe scrutiny but also the medical staff the dietitians the physiotherapists and all these people who are trying to work super hard on pedri staying fit because bloody hell i i mean i still stay and stand by the fact we should put him on the market test the waters see what you get and if you want to renew his deal either same salary or even less because there is no way he's done 
anything. Well, I think on the pitch in terms of his performances, yes, you can maybe offer him uh, an increased salary, but when he's putting those good performances about, you know, 20 games out of 50, 60 games a year, is it really worth it? So, I'll wait and see on that. But we do have some confirmed injury news, and that is that Marcus Alonso's surgery was successful. It did take place, I believe, on Monday or Tuesday, if I'm not mistaken. He was operating under the same doctor that did the surgery for uh, Ter Stegen as well. He's going to be out for two months. Around March, he'll return. He did a little post on Instagram as well. Hope to do. No one cares. Now, the big injury update is on João Cancelo from last night's game. He went off in about, what, the seventh minute. He had the... Uh, knee problem he had the knee brace as well when he came out after half time chavi said after the game that Cancel's injury doesn't seem serious we're gonna wait for tests later on today last night rosa Sedera from Montevideo did say that everything indicates that joel Cancelo will miss the super cup he's suffering from a sprain so it'll be a couple weeks out that's what we're hearing i think also tv3 came out during the game against las palmas saying that he's gonna probably gonna miss the rest of this month which is a massive blow especially in terms of the super cup i think that without Cancelo, we're looking at having back now going to be making their return, which again isn't the worst back line in the world. But when your what arguably top two, top three players this season goes down injured, it is a difficult side to see. But we'll wait and see for official confirmation. He's going to be doing his test later on today. Probably by the time I upload this video, we'll have a good indication of what the time frame will be. I think he will probably do those tests before Victor Roque's presentation. So the news will come out before that. But we're looking, I think, at around two or three weeks being out. He'll probably miss the Super Cup. I think that's pretty much guaranteed at this point. The question is, will he be back this month of January? Or will it be long term? He'll come back, uh, hopefully, God forbid, uh, in February. But not looking good in terms of the imminent future. But hopefully long term, it isn't serious for Cancelo. So that was my reaction to the Barcelona news over the past 48 hours. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to leave a like and of course leave me your thoughts down below in the comments on everything we discussed. The main thing I want to say, of course, is your thoughts on the Alex Garcia transfer news. You think it'll happen or not? You think for 12 million is an absolute steal and we should do it no matter what? You think it's the release clause is actually 12 million or not? Talk your thoughts on Deco looking for a winger. You think that's the right decision? You think there should be more priorities ahead of that where there's going to be a pivot, uh, fullbacks, maybe even a number nine to provide, you know, Roque coverage and competition if in fact Lewandowski or Aruho is sell a soul you think a big sale will happen this summer or not and find your thoughts on the signings of the permanent transfers of the Joao's would you sign them both one of them or if you're maybe you're really stupid neither of them I think Cancelo is pretty much guaranteed how much would you really pay for Cancelo and Felix as well and of course make sure you guys subscribe down below if you haven't already and I will see you guys next time on the channel take care and Forza Barca <laughs>